on my open air review, I called this knife the Dauk Dauk and the Duck Duck and several other things. But viewer Elix Serpus said it's Duke Duke. Trust me, I'm French. So that's what it shall be known as, even though I have a very hard time trusting the French. But in this day and age, when we're more likely to trust some bullshit anonymous people make up on the internet rather than scientists, industry professionals, and investigative reporters, I feel real good about it. But enough about our collectively broken bullshit detectors. Let's talk about the dimensions of this compact French slip joint folder, which has been made the very same way for thousands of years. Trust me. Like the overall length and weight. the blade size, the cutting edge, the handle size, the grip area, the spine thickness, the handle thickness, and the tallness. Martial Law 123 has been a longtime subscriber here, and on my sporadically updated Instagram, a place also where only a fraction of my followers or subscribers look at or watch my stuff, he mentioned he loves the Duke Duke because of its slimness and very strong backspring and Frenchness. So basically, let's wrap it up, folks. Close out your window on your work computer. Wipe. Go home. Game over, man. That's all the review you need. Still here? Yeah. I got nothing better to do, too. Best as I can tell, the Duke Duke comes in a few handle combos in different sizes. Amazon has terrible product descriptions, and Blade HQ and Knife Center carry different variations. So, good luck. I bought the 3 and one eighth inch version, but there's a bigger 3 and a half inch version that still weighs less than 3 ounces, but the product picture looks exactly the same, so I bought the wrong one. The moral of the story being, there's always someone with a bigger one out there. Just ask your wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, or sex robot. So this version is a 3 and 1 8 inch one. It has a clip point blade style and what looks to my eyes like a flat grind. Now I read a website that calls it a hollow grind and Blade HQ calls it a flat grind, so believe whatever the fuck you want. But I don't see a concave curve to the blade, so I declare mine a flat. Mine came pretty dull out of the large Amazon box it tumbled around loosely inside. It took about 30 minutes on my Spyderco Sharp Maker, getting the blade sharp using the pretty abrasive diamond stones to start with, then the gray ones before I said, you know what, good enough. The blade is said to be made out of a carbon steel, and if you look at the blade spine, some parts are not polished satin like the rest of the blade. I don't know, maybe it's carbon deposits? Different models will have different engravings on the blade. This one has lavish vines and the word France, like it's trying to trick you into thinking it's not a piece of shit. I mean, I'm not saying it is, it just kind of looks like it's overcompensating for 25 bucks. The blade stays in place via a strong slip joint mechanism. Slip joints don't technically lock and have a backspring resisting the blade folding. I mean, you knew that, but that's just in case idiots are watching. This one has one of the strongest backsprings out of any knife I own, on par with my Boker Slack. You're like, no thanks, didn't watch that one. There is no thumb nick, which is fine because it would probably tear your fingernail, so just pull it for a two-stage opening. To close it, both fingers firmly on the blade, while your two fingers from the other end hold the handle firmly. Boom, boom, two-stage closing. The handle is a single piece of folded steel with a Duke Duke character, a mythical Melanesian creature that influences helpless humans to believe anything they read on the internet, take herbal supplements, and think repealing net neutrality will suddenly make telecom monopolies give us faster internet and lower prices. In the two areas near the blade and near the back of the knife where the metal is folded, I had to sand down little metal shards to make the handle a bit more comfortable and less pokey. The handle is an okay comfortable, the metal is rounded, but if you squeeze it hard it might dig into your fingers unless you man up for a change. Now my hand personally is a bit too big for it so I wouldn't call it a great knife for larger handed dudes or ladies. There's no pocket clip on it but it does have this loop near the back so you can lanyardize it to your belt loop or whatever or put it on a keychain. So how about a quick semi-recycled comparison versus a slightly larger and more refined Boker Slack. It's also like a hundred dollar knife. An excellent slip joint knife with a similarly strong backspring. Not an easy close for people not used to them. 
It's a great knife to loan to someone and then wait for them to try and close it, but ultimately ask you because they can't. So at least you can feel like you're worth a shit for about 30 seconds. Now the Open L8 that I did a week or two ago. That's cool because I smoke in the review and smoking's cool. For most people, the Open L is the better choice because it's a knife that's non-knife person friendly and not scary looking. The Duke Duke feels like a more robust knife, which is probably why it was popular with Algerian murder squads. That and probably the price. Look it up if you don't believe me. There's an internet story about it, which has to be true. Then the Higo no Kami. It's also a traditional folder made the same way it was thousands of years ago in the 1800s. Easy to sharpen, and a great knife to make up fanciful stories about that never happened. Because it looks like it's seen some shit, especially if you forget to dry the blade after cutting some apples. Yeah, that's blood. Okay, so that about does it. Look for some upcoming reviews of more traditional folders because that's literally all my channel can afford right now. You know, till it blows up to hair gel levels of whatever this sort of video would be. You're like, I don't get it, man. Hair gel, what does that mean? You know what? I don't get it either. Like, subscribe, comment, click the bell. Merry Christmas. Oh yeah, and you know what? Happy Hanukkah too for that one guy that was triggered and cussed me out a few weeks ago. Thanks for watching.